learning objectives. After studying this learning module, students will be able to define and explain the features of services, differentiate between goods and services, examine different types of business services, define the concepts of e-banking, identify and categorize different kinds of insurance policies and define different types of warehouses and their functions. Introduction Definition Services and Goods Services are those identifiable and impalpable activities that provide satisfaction of wants and are essentially not related to sale of any product or any other service. On the other hand, a good is a physical product which is able of being delivered to a buyer and involves transferability of possession. Nature of Services Intangibility Services are intangible and experiential in nature and hence can't be touched. They can only be experienced. Inconsistent As there is not tangible good involved, services can be performed completely every time. Service providers need to alter their services as per the demand of customers every time. Inseparable They are produced and consumed simultaneously. It means production and consumption of services is inseparable. Inventory Less Services have very less or almost no tangible components and hence services cannot be kept for future use. Customers participate in the service delivery process. Involvement the most important feature of service is that they require participation of customers in the delivery procedure. Difference between goods and services Goods are transferable while services are not. While services need to be performed, goods are produced. Goods can be taken home while services can't be. And what we can take away with us is the effect of services. Since services are sold at the very point of consumption, there are no involvement of inventories. Types of services Types of services While talking about the service sector, they can be classified into three main categories, namely Business service, personal services, and social services. In the following lines, we will discuss every business service in detail. Business services Services used by business enterprises to organize their activities are called business services. Services offered by different organizations for the purpose of earning profits like transportation, banking, insurance, communication and warehousing services comes under the domain of business services. Personal Services Services which are experienced differently by different consumers are called personal services. Since these are felt differently by different people, these services can never be consistent in nature and differ from service provider to service provider. They also depend upon the customer's personal preferences, demands and necessities. For instance, recreational, restaurant and tourism services. Social services Services offered voluntarily in pursuit of some specific social goals are called social services. These services may be offered to uplift the standard of weaker section of the society 
or to offer health care services in rural areas. Such kind of services are usually offered voluntarily, but to some extent to cover their costs. For example, health care services and educational services offered by several non-government organizations, NGOs and also government agencies. Banking Banking A bank is an institution that accepts money on deposits and earns a margin of profit by lending it. It stimulates economic and financial activity in the market by dealing in money. A bank mobilizes the money of people and make funds available to businesses to finance their revenue and capital expenditure. It also deals in different financial services for a cost, that is, interest, commission, discount, etc. Types of Banks Banks can be broadly classified into four categories, commercial, cooperative, specialized and central banks. Commercial banks are governed by Indian Banking Regulation Act 1949 and according to them, the basic purpose of banking is accepting deposits from people and lending it for the purpose of investment. They are of two types, public sector and private sector banks. Cooperative banks are regulated by the provisions of State Cooperative Societies Act. They are meant specially for providing cheap credits to their members. Specialized banks are foreign exchange banks, development banks, industrial banks, export-import banks, meeting the particular needs of these activities. They provide monetary assistance to heavy turnkey projects, industries, etc. Central Bank of any nation regulates, supervises and control the activities of all commercial banks. It also works as a government banker. It regulates and controls currency and credit provisions. Functions of Commercial Bank Acceptance of deposits, lending of funds, collection and clearance of checks and remittance of funds are some of the basic functions of commercial banks. E-Banking In simple terms, any user with a computer or smartphone and browser can get connected to bank's website to avail bank's services and perform virtual banking functions. It facilitates digital payments, promotes transparency in banking operations, accessible 24 hours, customers can perform functions from anywhere, greater customer satisfaction, etc. Insurance Insurance it is a device through which a loss, probably to be caused by an indeterminate event, is dispersed over a number of people who are exposed to it and who prepare to insure themselves against such events and losses occurred due to them. It is an agreement between the insurance company and insured person under which the insurer settles in return for a consideration to pay a fixed amount to the insured to make a damage, loss or injury to something valuable in which the insured has some interest as an outcome of uncertain event. Fundamental Principles of Insurance Insurance is the substitution of a little periodic payment called premium for a risk of huge possible loss. Loss is dispersed between a large number of policyholders who are exposed to the same risk. Risks are shared with large number of people. 
Insurance is like a risk management used to secure against possible financial losses. Functions of insurance Insurance offers assurance of payment for the probability of loss. Protection from possibility of financial loss. Sharing of loss if an uncertain event takes place. The gathered funds of the insurance company received as premium are invested in different income producing schemes. Insurance principles and types. Principles of insurance. An insurance is a contract found on highest good faith and both the insurer and insured display faith towards each other. The insured has some insurable interest in insurance. The insurance company takes the responsibility to put the insured in the same position that he had before occurrence of the event. When the loss is the outcome of two or more reasons, the proximate cause implies the most dominant reason of which the loss is the normal consequence. It implies the right of the insurer to stand in place of the insured person after the claim settlement. Insurer has the right to call upon other insurers to contribute for the payment loss. Minimizing loss by taking necessary steps is the duty of the insured. Types of insurance There are different kinds of insurance exist by the virtue of practice of different insurance companies and the effect of legal enactments regulating the insurance business. Life insurance is a contract in which the insurance company, in consideration of some premium, agrees to pay the insured sum of money in case a certain event occurs contingent on the human life or at the expiry of specific period. Therefore, the insurer undertakes to safeguard the life of a person in exchange of certain amount of money called premium. Life insurance offers protection to the family of the insured in case of his or her premature death as per the premium paid by the insured or offers sufficient amount at an old age when earning capacities diminishes. It is not only a protection but is a type of investment since a specific amount of money is returnable to the insured at the time of his death or after the expiry of a certain period. Elements of Life Insurance The contract of life insurance must possess all the essential elements of a valid contract. It is a contract of utmost faith. Under life insurance, the insured must have some insurable interest in the life insured. It is not a contract of indemnity. Types of insurance policies Types of insurance policies People have different necessities and hence they would choose a policy that fulfills their requirements. The necessities of people for life insurance can be children needs, family needs, old age and other special needs. To cater to these needs, the insurer have designed and developed different products like endowment plans, whole life assurance, combination of whole life and endowment plans, annuity plans and children's assurance plans. Whole life policy. Under this, the amount payable to the insured person will not be paid prior to the death of the assured. Hence, the sum is paid only to the beneficiaries. Endowment Life Insurance Policy This insurance company 
pay a specific amount of money when the insured person attains a certain age or on his death, whichever happens earlier. The sum is paid to his nominee in case of death. Joint Life Policy This kind of life insurance is taken by two or more people jointly. The premium is also paid jointly or in installments. The sum assured is paid on the death of any one person to the other survivors. Annuity Policy Under this, the sum assured is payable after the person attains a certain age in monthly, half-yearly, quarterly or annual installments. Children's Endowment Policy This policy is taken by people for their children to meet the expenses of their marriage and education. The contract says that a specific amount will be paid when the children attains a specific age. Fire and Marine Insurance Fire Insurance it is a contract whereby the insurance company, in deliberation of the premium paid, promises to make good any losses or damages occurred because of fire during a certain period up to the amount given in the policy. Generally, a fire insurance is only for a time period of one year and is renewed from time to time. Claim for loss caused by fire should satisfy these conditions. There must be some real loss and cause of fire should be accidental. Elements of Fire Policy The insured must possess some insurable interest in the insurance. It is also a contract of utmost faith. It is a contract of strict indemnity. The insurer is liable to pay the amount only when the fire is the proximate cause of the damage caused. Marine Insurance It is a contract whereby the insurance company undertakes to indemnify to the extent thus agreed against marine losses. Marine Insurance offers protection against losses occurred by marine perils. It is somehow different from other types of insurance as there are things involved that is cargo or goods, ship or hell and freight. Elements of Marine Insurance It is a contract of indemnity. It is also a contract of utmost good faith. Insurable interest must prevail at the time of loss. The principle of causa proxima is applicable. Communication Services Communication Services These help businesses in establishing links with the outside world through suppliers, competitors, customers, etc. The main services which help businesses can be categorized into postal and telecom services. Postal Services Indian Postal and Telegraph Department offers various postal services across India. The whole country is divided into 22 postal circles to manage the operations of different head post offices, branch and sub post offices. Various facilities provided by postal departments. Postal departments provide financial facilities through post offices different financial schemes like Kisan Vikas Patra, National Saving Certificate and Public Provident Fund. They also provide mailing services, that is, transmission of goods from one place to another. Telecom Services 
top-notch telecommunication services is the key to fast economic and social development of a country. It is in fact the backbone of every business. Types of telecom services Cellular mobile services includes all kinds of mobile telecom services like voice calls, messages, PCO and data services with the help of any kind of network device within the area. Fixed line services include all sorts of fixed services to set up linkages of long distance traffic. Cable services are linkages and switched services within a specific area to operate media services, which are generally one-way entertainment related services. VSAT services are a satellite-based communication service. DTH services is also a satellite-based media services offered by cellular services. Transportation and Warehousing Transportation It includes freight services together with supporting and auxiliary services by all means of transportation that is road, rail, air and sea for the purpose of movement of goods. Transportation is essential for every business as speed is of essence in every business transaction. Also, it removes the interruption of place, that is, it makes goods available to customers from the production place. Warehousing The warehouses were viewed initially as a static unit for storing and keeping goods in a scientific and methodical manner so as to maintain their integrity, value and usefulness. Nowadays, warehouses have ceased to be only storage service providers and have certainly become logistical service providers in a cost-effective manner. Types of Warehouses Private warehouses are owned, operated or leased by an organization handling their own goods like retail chain stores or multi-brand, multi-product organizations. Public warehouses are used for storage of products by traders, manufacturers or public member after the payment of storage charges. Bonded warehouses are managed by the government to accept imported goods before payment of tax and custom duty. Government warehouses are completely owned and managed by the government. The government manages these warehouses through organizations established in the public sector. Cooperative warehouses are set up by marketing or agricultural cooperative societies for members of their own society. Functions of Warehousing Functions of Warehousing Several important functions of modern warehouse performed today are discussed in brief below. Consolidation a warehouse receives and consolidates goods and materials from various production plants and dispatches the same to a specific customer on a sole transportation shipment. This function performed by a warehouse is called consolidation. Break the bulk under this function, a warehouse does the function of dividing the huge quantity of goods received from the manufacturing or production plants into smaller quantities. These divided quantities are then transported as per the necessities of customers at their places of business. Stockpiling 
the subsequent function of warehousing is seasonal storage of products to choose business raw materials or products which are not needed immediately are stored in these warehouses value added services a few value added services are also provided by warehouses like packaging transmit mixing and labeling at times products required to be opened and repackaged and then labeled again during inspection by prospective purchasers price stabilization and financing by regulating the supply of products with the demand circumstances warehousing does the function of price stabilization owners of warehouses advance money to the owners on security of products and further supply products on credit terms to customers summary let us summarize what we have learnt in this module services are intangible and experiential in nature production and consumption of services are inseparable services cannot be kept for future use customers participate in the service delivery process goods are transferable while services are not while services need to be performed and goods are produced services used by business enterprises to organize their activities are called business services for instance transportation banking insurance communication and warehousing services a bank is an institution that accepts money on deposits and earns a margin of profit by lending it it stimulates economic and financial activity in the market by dealing in money a bank mobilizes the money of people and makes funds available to businesses to finance their revenue and capital expenditure acceptance of deposits lending of funds collection and clearance of checks and remittance of funds are some of the basic functions of commercial banks e banking facilitates digital payments promotes transparency in banking operations accessible 24 hours customers can perform functions from anywhere and provide greater customer satisfaction etc insurance is the substitution of a little periodic payment called premium for a risk of huge possible loss it is like a risk management used to secure against possible financial losses insurance offers an assurance of payment for the probability of loss protection from the possibility of financial loss sharing of loss if an uncertain event takes place the gathered funds of the insurance company received as premium are invested in different income producing schemes communication services help businesses in establishing links with the outside world through suppliers competitors customers etc the main service which help businesses can be categorized into postal and telecom services indian postal and telegraph department offers various postal services across india the whole country is divided into total 22 postal circles to manage the operations of different head post offices branch and sub post offices telecom services is the key to fast economic and social development of a country it is in fact the backbone of every business the warehouses were viewed initially as a static unit for storing and keeping goods in a scientific and methodical manner so as to maintain their integrity value and usefulness
Nowadays, warehouses have ceased to be only storage service providers and have certainly become logistical service providers in a cost-effective manner.